If you've got a BMW S1000 RR, one of the things that you'll strike is conversation about resetting adaptations. And what I want to do in this video is talk about that resetting of adaptations, which is an important part of keeping the bike tuned, particularly if you're making changes to the hardware or software of the motorcycle. So in this video, what I want to do is explain in a couple of parts, number one, what resetting adaptations actually is, how you go about doing that, and then talk about it in the second part, the relearning phase, how you, what you need to do after you've done the reset. So I uh, hope you enjoy the video and get something out of it. First of all, what are adaptations? Well, I'm not a, I'm a technical expert on this by any means, but I do understand the functionality of it or the concept of it. Basically, adaptations are where this bike learns certain things about the motorcycle. So for example, you've got a fly-by wire throttle. It recognizes and learns where the full off position is of the throttle, which is electronic, and then the full on position. And it's able to uh, activate the throttle bodies in accordance to the position of that throttle. So in order to change the throttle, right, you could go and get a new throttle bolted on here, but you need to reset the adaptation so it learns the functionality or the positions of that particular throttle. So that would be an example of this. Now, there are situations when adaptations need to be cleared and reset, and they would be when you do some tweaking of the software, uh, you might do some tuning of the ECU, or you might upgrade the software itself, or you might change certain hardware items on the bike, like for example, the throttle itself, you might go from a 90 degree throttle to a 60 degree throttle, you might put a slip on exhaust, you might put a new air filter in it, and certain features of the bike, just performance upgrades, when you change those, you would need to reset adaptations associated with that. But there are other componentry that needs to be, uh, or lead to a adaptation reset, and that would be when you replace certain parts of it because of servicing or cleaning. Um, throttle bodies, for example, oxygen sensors and things like that. So in essence, what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you how you reset the adaptations with this using this HEX GS911. And uh, there are a couple of idiosyncrasies with different parts or the different types of adaptations, particularly the throttle and the gears and things like that. But uh, anyway, let's just go and show you how you do it. So first of all, you would need to plug in the device. So in this case, like I said, I'm using the HEX GS911. So this is a Wi-Fi version. So it's going to connect to the iPad over here. Okay, all I need to do is rescan once it's online. Okay, now it's located the HEX GS911 in the software, but what it hasn't done is detected the vehicle yet. So in order to do that, you need to turn the vehicle on. So once it locates the vehicle, in this case, it's the BMW S1000RR, I can simply open up the detected vehicle and it takes us to a number of options here. And you'll see in here, you've got engine controller, ABS brakes, instrument cluster, electronic suspension, etc. There's a whole bunch of these. Well, if I go into the engine controller, and if you look down further, it can read, read you can clear faults, but if you go to service functions, what it does is it brings up a couple of options here. You've got the BMSX adaptations. If you open that, you can see that you can reset the adaptations associated with the dynamic traction control, mixture, twist grip, throttle valve, uh, the transmission itself, and the knock sensors. So basically, let's just do the simple ones first. So I'm gonna reset the mixture. All I simply do is click on reset mixture. Okay and then the current value, right, it talks about what the current values are. So I just click reset. It tells you to turn the ignition off. Turn the ignition back on. Okay, and that is the mixture adaptations reset. So it's going to take a little bit of a relearning period now to analyze the oxygen sensors and the, the environment this bike is riding in and all the hardware so that optimizes the performance uh, from a mixture perspective. Um, resetting the twist grip. Okay, so in this particular case, I'll show you how this works even though I've already done this one. If you replace the twist grip in this case, you've got to recognize it's a, it's a fly-by-wire throttle, so it's electronic. And it needs to electronically recognize what the voltage is when the throttle is fully off and when the throttle is fully on or fully open. So you'll see if I click continue, right, so it's going to tell me turn the ignition off. 
turn the ignition back on, open the throttle to the maximum and hold it, all right? And then close the throttle to the minimum, let it go. Turn the ignition off. Turn the ignition back on. And that is the throttle position sensor has now been recalibrated to that particular throttle. So we can reset the throttle valve. So basically that is the throttle bodies or the throttle valve is going to be synchronized with that particular throttle position. It's the same thing. Turn the ignition off. Turn on the ignition. Okay, completed successfully. Uh, reset knock sensors. Turn the ignition off. Turn on the ignition. Okay, that's completed. And the final one I want to run through, because there's a little bit of a process that we go through to finish it off, and that is the transmission. So we click Reset transmission. Okay, click continue. It's basically going to uh, reset it in alignment with the voltage settings for each of the gears here. Turn the ignition off. Okay, turn on the ignition. And that is completed successfully. What I want to talk about in the second part of the video is how you go through a series of steps to complete the adaptation reset correctly. This piece of information is not well explained, if at all, in many cases, but it was pointed out to me by Chris Lynch, who looks after the BMW bikes for the Californian Superbike School. The series of steps is quite simple. Number one, once you've completed the reset, turn the ignition off and leave it like that for at least 90 seconds. And the reason we do that is by turning it off, the ECU clears its memory and it goes through a full shutdown if you leave it for that time period. The second thing you're gonna do is you're going to start the bike and you're going to let it idle and build its temperature right through its operating temperature range to a point when the fan comes on. When the fan comes on, it will begin to cool the mo motorcycle. As the temperature drops, the fan will go back off again. And at that point, you've completed that step. The other thing that we've got to consider is if we've done a reset of the gearbox, then we need to go through a process for that, which I'll explain now. But in order to complete the gears now, uh, the, the transmission one, what we've basically got to do is run the engine and then run it through the gears, all of the gears, right up from first through to sixth for about 10 seconds in every gear and then back down through the gears from six down to first. And I'm gonna do that sitting on the bike and the reason I do that is I want it to recognize the pressure that I would apply in a seated position here. Um, so the guidance give to me, given to me was that is the best way to do it. And what's interesting is they said if you change the position of the rear sets and you move those around, the pressure on the gear lever itself through the quick shifter may change. So therefore you should reset the transmission in response to that. So uh, there you go. Well, that's it. That's the end of the video. Um, I just want to highlight a couple of points again. If you've got a BMW S1000 RR, you know how to do the reset of adaptations correctly. And it's important that you recognize that if you're changing hardware or software on the motorcycle, you need to go through that process. So, you know, if you don't have a Hex GS911, then get yourself one. Uh, it definitely pays for itself in the first couple of service light resets if you do your own servicing. So uh, there you go. Hope you got something out of the video and I'll see you in another one. Bye.